Hey everyone, today's video is going to be a continuation of my last video. We're going to be looking at the solution side of things, but before the video begins, everything I mentioned will be linked and sourced in the description. So if you need more information on something or source code, you can check there. But even things not mentioned may also be linked in the description due to time constraints or unforeseen reasons. So please make sure you check at the end of the video just to make sure you have accurate and up-to-date info anyways. And if you're a gamer watching this, this video is more geared towards developers. However, there will be a brief portion of the video dedicated to you guys towards the end. And there will be timestamps in the video. However, I know a lot of you will still watch the full video anyways, and I do greatly appreciate it. Now, the first subject to discuss is graphics settings in the user menu. And it's very important to provide users with as much freedom to tweak their anti aliasing due to accessibility reasons. TAA, as an example, can cause blur in motion, which will trigger some people's motion sickness. So providing a different method or off option in its place is great for these people and even for those who just dislike it. However, providing options can be problematic. What if it's a very important part of your render pipeline and doing so causes issues? Well, later in the video we'll be discussing how to mitigate those issues, but for now, if this is the case, there are some simple solutions to work around this problem. So firstly, in order to provide the user with more choice without harming the experience of a casual or less tech savvy person who changes a setting that then causes issues, it's important to note that these types of people either do not change settings at all, or they or they only change the default preset, and typically do not manually tweak individual settings. So as long as the options you want are in the default preset, you should be safe from these instances. Some games also provided the user with a warning message when they disabled TAA, prompting the user to click confirm before it's done with a message warning them there will be consequences such as automatically disabling certain effects, excessive aliasing, or graphical issues. This further helps to mitigate people accidentally giving themselves issues while providing options for users who need them. You can also provide brief in-game descriptions telling people what anti-LC method you recommend and why. Like this game does, as an example, right here. Another thing you can do is provide users with the control over your game's TAA like this game does with things like jitter speed and sample counts. Doing this allows the user to control the ratio of anti-aliasing the blur they like to better adjust it to their own sensitivities. And this is especially important if you are adamant about TA being required in your game. So if it is, then please consider doing this. Next section of the video is going to be discussing how to improve the current anti-aliasing methods we have, especially traditional ones to work better in our high detail deferred rendered engines. Starting off, we have MSAA, so if you really want MSAA to work with your project, these are three things you can do to make it more compatible with deferred rendered games. Number one, add more forward rendering into the pipeline. This will lower the cost of MSAA and make it more effective. Number two, use alpha tests at MSAA. And three, use tricks to get MSAA to properly render vegetation. Alan Wake does this. Now, the third example is vague. I'm not a Remedy dev, so I don't know how they did it, and I'm unsure if they have public documentation on it. But if you can figure it out, then it will help, since we know it is possible. Next up, we have SMAA. So use non-single frame SMA, like SMA two times and even four times as well, where needed. SMA can be very effective if implemented properly. <clears throat> and this is an example of a game that, uh, that does this. This game was released in 2022 and was made using the Unity engine. Despite being a newer game and having a decent amount of aliasing when all options are disabled, SMA practically, practically removes all aliasing from the game, showing just how powerful it can be with the right configuration. This game also has a free demo that you can try if you want to. Number five, use alpha to coverage to treat full agent vegetation. Number six, super sample certain parts of the rendering like full agent vegetation. Now this one is very situational because it's quite expensive. So if your game has a lot of foliage, but it's lightweight, you could use this. Or if your game is pretty heavy, but it doesn't have much foliage, then you could use this. But if your game's kind of heavy to run and it has a lot of foliage, then this definitely wouldn't be a, a viable option. Um, but it could be provided as an option for players. Number seven, when TAA is disabled, make things that rely on it TAA independent, like hair or SSR, and in SSR's case, you can do that by using an independent denoiser. So I'm gonna show you an example of a guy doing this in Unreal Engine 5. So as you can see, that's what Unreal Engine 5's hair looks like normally. And this is his tweak that he's using right here to get the hair to be independent. So as you can see, that's what the hair looks like now. There is absolutely no anti aliasing on this image and the hair looks fine, whereas before it looked dithered. As you can see, I'll go back, yeah. 
that looks pretty nasty. So you can use that as uh, inspiration to help you. Next is ATA. If your game is fully ray traced, you can then consider using adaptive temporal anti aliasing, which is an idea proposed by NVIDIA at a GDC conference. Now, I'm not going to be covering this in depth since it has its own video and documentation, but I will summarize it briefly. ATA is a hybrid anti aliasing solution that attempts to use the strength of different anti aliasing algorithms on different parts of the image to overcome their own independent flaws, basically, creating a super anti aliasing technique that is effective with, bar with barely any trade off. But the version NVIDIA seems to be presenting requires ray tracing, so it is not suitable for every game, but perhaps there is a version that can be forked without ray tracing being required if your game does not support it. Uh, and then here's the video for it. It's 10 minutes long, and then here's the documentation. It'll be linked in the description. Next, we have specular anti-aliasing. Author the materials in such a way that they will produce less specular aliasing. Years of War 4 does something similar to this. You can also see what Valve did in Half-Life Alex. So Valve's techniques were used in VR. However, their methods work in traditional games as well. So you can still read and learn from this paper. The anti aliasing section begins on uh, page 24, which I will skip to and scroll through briefly. You can also check out this code on Shader Toy, which does some of the same things Valve discussed and someone even converted it to an Unreal Engine blueprint. Uh, here's the code right here. And uh, here's the Unreal Engine Blueprint that you can add to your game. And I think you can convert these blueprints to uh, Unity. And if you're using Unreal Engine, also make sure to uh, ch change this setting as well. Now, these augment the roughness values. So plug these into your roughness after anything else you do right at the end. And lastly, I'm just going to uh, do a brief comparison here. So... This is no anti-aliasing versus Valve's method. Now, these are taken without any anti-aliasing applied at all. It's just all materials. There's still the slightest bit of shimmer and stair step, but this function clamps the roughness to a value that could be cleaned up by something as light as SMAA. So, no anti-aliasing, Valve's method. Here's the Shader Toy 1. Now, the Shader Toy 1 has a 2, because you can adjust the strength of it to whatever you'd like. Next, thin geometry and wire anti-aliasing. This section will cover how to anti-alias some thin geometry and wires much better, even with very light or primitive anti-aliasing methods. <clears throat> so using this clamps the mesh to the size of a pixel when it gets smaller than a pixel. It calculates the size of a pixel based on the resolution in camera FOV, and scales the mesh along the normals based on the size of the pixel so that it never goes below a pixel. It works for thin geometry like wires, but not for solid objects. This can help SMAA, SMAA, and TAA resolve things like wires better. Max size and min size can be tweaked with a parameter. You might need to increase the balance scale or else you will get flickering as the mesh gets larger. So here, here it is right here. So here's the source. And there's also an image showcasing the effect, as you can see. Um, I believe I have a photo of it up. No AA, SMAA, wire AA, and SMA plus wire MSAA. Remember, this doesn't require MSA to work and can be combined with other methods. It does a very good job at actually into elsing the wire instead of simply removing it or making it shimmer. And here's also another uh, underwrench blueprint for the same effect that you can add to your game. Links in the description. Next, we have scholastic uh, anti aliasing Scholastic anti aliasing works by randomizing the rasterization pattern instead of sampling the pixel centers only. Random locations inside the pixel are sampled. This turns aliasing the noise with the correct average. It may look a little odd in screenshots, but play but at playable frame rates makes it look natural. The reason this technique exists is because noise is easier on the eyes than traditional aliasing is. So here's the code right here, and I will zoom in on this. As you can see, you have traditional aliasing, then you have scholastic anti-aliasing. You can tell the noise on the edges is a lot less distracting and more subtle than the traditional aliasing is. Uh, which makes it less distracting and bearable. This is a pretty unique and interesting method that I recommend experimenting with. As always, a link to it will be provided in the description. Temporal anti-aliasing. Number one, use a history buffer of 200% on temporal AA screen resolution. This is what advanced derivatives of TA like DLA uses. 
100% will immediately leak into other pixels, while 200% will leak into subpixels first and blur less. If you were if using Unreal Engine 4, the command is r.temporalaa.history screen percentage equals 200%, and r.tsr.history screen percentage equals 200%. To avoid smearing due to vertex animation, you need to enable output velocities due to vertex deformation in the project settings and use the console command r.basepass force output velocities 1. If you're using Unreal Engine, that is, or if you have a similar setting in your own engine. The last thing you can do when this is situational is you can use negative mipmaps to increase the overall texture detail to offset TA blur. And that is, if this is required, obviously, if you're using all the techniques in this video, your TA may be less strong or less blurry, so it may not be required. Uh, but if it is required, then make sure to unapply this tweak when not using TA to reduce aliasing on other methods. Also, check out Decimus paper on their TA that you can find here. Uh, the anti-aliasing section begins on page 24, so I'll scroll through it for a bit so you can get a quick uh, glance at it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to this video showcase of someone showing their their AA off in a game at 1080p. 1080p is worst case scenario for anti aliasing yet it does a pretty decent job and there's no ghosting or blur whatsoever. Um, so there, there's no AA, SMA, and now their TAA one's coming up right here. There it is. So it combines FXA and TAA together to achieve this. However, that's not why I like it doing some special things with the TA to mitigate its flaws that I uh, recommend reading up on because uh, there's just barely any blur or ghosting so it's uh, pretty good next up we have dynamic sharpening if using TA consider utilizing dynamic sharpening which is a sharpening algorithm that can intelligently intelligently change sharpness levels based on the motion the goal of this is to better combat TEA's motion blur as a typical as typical techniques only help to alleviate stationary blur. So here's, oops, I did not mean to click on that. So here's uh, this, I'll leave a link to it. So I made a plugin for Unreal Engine that you can uh, download and check out at this site. They also have a video on it uh, showcasing the effect visualized. So this is what it looks like. So I will leave a link to that in the description. So next is just a brief message for Unreal Engine devs. If you're an Unreal Engine dev, one of the most important things is to not completely lock down your Engine INI file. If this is an online PvP game, you kind of have to in order to avoid cheating. However, you don't have to lock down the file entirely. You can actually whitelist certain CVARs for usage. So here's a list of all the ones that you should let people tweak to customize their TAA. You know, they're just at their anti aliasing experience basically without compromising on the integrity of the game. Um, here's the list of them. And if there's anything in this list you feel like does compromise the integrity of your game for whatever reason, you can always exclude it and include the rest. You could also optionally provide these options in game, but obviously there are a lot of settings so that would require either their own little advanced tab or drop down menu. Now, if you don't know how to whitelist certain commands, there's ways to do it that I won't be covering in this video, but I hope uh, you take the time to research it. Now, here are some tips on improving the anti-aliasing experience from the user end of things. So this isn't for developers, this is for uh, gamers. Obviously, it is more limited than what a developer could do, for example, which is why I'm making this video to begin with. So if a developer does have a pretty bad options by default, and you're struggling to find a balance of distracting Jaggy to blur, here are some tips. So tip number one, if you're playing an Unreal Engine game, refer to one of these posts to tweak your TAA to be a bit better, but it only works if the game is not locked down their Engine INI file. And then I leave a link to the post that you can find in the description. Next, if you're an RTX 20 owner or above, you can combine DLSS with DLDSR or DSR for superior image quality. Next, if you're an RTX 20 owner again or higher, you can update your DLSS to the latest version for superior image quality by downloading the latest DLSS, DLL, and replacing them over the ones your game shipped with. And there's a link to where to download it. Next, you can upgrade your PPI or your resolution. Higher PPI displays and higher resolutions both help to mitigate TAA's downsides, although this shouldn't have to be required to enjoy a game with a decent image. It unfortunately is sometimes. Next thing you can do is super sample the game, especially if you're not on a high PPI or a 4K display.
You can also sit further away from your display. And lastly, try to hit 90 FPS or above. Resolution is more important for TAA's quality and FPSs. So you never sacrifice resolution to hit that FPS. Drop other settings first. And here's a good resource for game optimization. Now, in this last portion, I want to address some common misconceptions. The first is that DLSS, FSR, XCSS, and any similar technique is not TAA. They are actually forms of TAA, thus suffer from the same flaws TAA does. They may suffer from, from them less and may be better to use instead, but they are far from perfect themselves and aren't solutions to these issues, even if you can run them at native resolution. So do keep this in mind. Uh, but anyways, with that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and I really do appreciate it.